He came, he conquered, and then he disappeared forever after. Let's talk about Tobias, the trainer who broke the Pokemon anime. Hey everyone, it's Charles. How are you today? Tobias is a figure of legend in the Pokemon anime canon who came out of nowhere to sweep the Sinnoh League in an overwhelming show of power that served just one function. To put an end to Ash Ketchum's Lily of the Valley conference run. Indeed, Wayne Gretzky had snuck into the Peewee League to take slap shots at a bunch of ankle biters and fans were quick to cry foul at the most blatant Diabolus X Machina in Pokemon anime history. But narrative contrivances aside, how did Tobias break the anime? What what happened to him, who even is he, and will he ever return? The plan today is to discuss these topics, and as always it's going to be a fun time, so kindly subscribe to join the family, press like, please, and let's jump right in. We first got wind of Tobias when Barry informed Brock, Don, and later Ash that a mysterious Darkrai trainer had entered the Lily of the Valley conference. With Conway's research into Tobias midway through the tournament, revealing that he had won all of his gym badges and every tournament round thus far with his Darkrai alone. This was the first time in the anime's history that someone had brought a mythical Pokemon into a league conference. And furthermore, it was the very first time that we had seen a trainer sweeping an entire conference with just a single Pokemon. It almost felt as if a scenario was being set up in which Ash would be pitted against insurmountable odds and forced to suck down a big fat L. As expected, after Ash trounced his rival Paul, he met Tobias in the semi-finals and the long and short of it is that while Ash deserves credit as the only known Pokemon trainer to push Tobias to his second Pokemon, victory was never within his reach. Darkrai walked over Heracross, Torkoal, and Gibble and nearly wiped Sceptile out with a Dark Void Dream Eater combo. But this is Uncle Sceptile we are talking about about, and by way of a blazing fast leaf blade, the green gladiator made history as the first and only known Pokemon in the anime to put Tobias's Darkrai out for the count. It was a big moment that gave fans a glimmer of hope. I mean, Tobias had to be a one-trick pony, right? Wrong. I remember just chuckling and shaking my head when Tobias's Latios hit the pitch, but Ash Ketchum was certainly not chuckling, as the dragon psychic legendary from Hoenn who did not kiss him cut through Sceptile and Swellow like a chainsaw through a glob of jello, leaving the hopes of a nation, or maybe just Ash's hopes, on the tiny yellow shoulders of Pikachu. And while legendary slayer Pikachu couldn't quite net the W, he is still a hero for taking Latios to a draw even though it resists electric type attacks. Unfortunately, at this point, Ash had already experienced expanded his entire crew, leaving his Sinnoh League dreams capsized by the Diabolus X Machina Mystery Man, Tobias, and fans screeching into the void about how broken he was forever after. That said, was Tobias really all that broken? I suppose the answer to this question is both yes and no, not necessarily, depending on how exactly you look at the question. From one angle, up until Sinnoh, Ash's League conferences had been tough pills to swallow, but not particularly jarring as he was portrayed as roughly on par with his opponents. For instance, in the preceding series, Ash took Tyson to his last Pokemon, just narrowly losing to the man who would go on to win the tournament. And in the series before that, the top 8 match against Harrison went down to the wire, with Harrison's Blaziken just barely scooping the W out from beneath Ash's exhausted Charizard. But this time, Ash was absolutely obliterated by an opponent who had just walked out of competitive VGC to unwind with some grade schoolers at the playground, and fans were absolutely livid. That said, not to sound like a negative nose pass, but welcome to life. Sometimes people are simply a lot better at something than you and most other people on account of their hard work and experience, and you can either roll over and complain about how broken they are, or like our man Ash Ketchum, you can take a loss with humility, turn your feelings into fire to keep pushing forward, and come out all the better for it. Furthermore, while Tobias did have at least one mythical and one legendary Pokemon on his team, which felt pretty crazy at the time, just a series prior we had seen Brandon possessing three Reggie Titans, bringing out Regice against Ash in the Battle Frontier final, and Pikachu dropping Regice like a boss. And nowadays, well, they are now giving those things out like candy, and Ash himself is no stranger to mythicals and pseudo-legendaries. So while the mythical and legendary lineup was unheard of in conference play at the time, I don't think that the team composition itself is really what made Tobias so broken in the eyes of viewers. After all, if Ash's Infernape had been in good enough condition to fight, or if Ash's otherwise fairly well positioned team, led by double type advantage anti-Darkrai hero Heracross, had actually functioned as one would have hoped, or if Ash was simply as good as he became by the Pokemon Journeys era, then he could have reached much deeper into Tobias's bag of party tricks to make the battle less of a potato fight. And even if he was later stopped by Raikou, Heatran, or other nasty surprises, the loss 
else probably would have been easier for fans to digest. But alas, in hindsight, Lily of the Valley Conference Top 8 Contender Ash was not today's Alola Champion Masters 8 Qualifier Ash. He was not operating at full strength and he was simply caught off guard by a superior opponent. Certainly, Ash had come a long way since the days of his Indigo League incompetence and many fans may have dreamed that after defeating Paul, he would go on to conquer the entire league. But as we have seen in the 12 years of Ketchum development since, the reality is that he was still just an up-and-comer, thrown up against a vastly more experienced trainer dead serious about Pokemon battles who had clearly traveled the lands, captured or made friends with Darkrai, Latios, and whatever other Pokemon were on his team or in his very likely big Pokemon box, and trained them into an all-star strike force. Looking into the world lore itself and the aspirations of its trainers, Tobias was exactly the kind of trainer that most would dream of becoming, sporting a team the likes of which people on the other side of the screen had always wanted Ash himself to bring into battle. So I don't think Tobias really broke the Pokemon anime in terms of his place in the broader Pokemon anime mythos. Rather, I think what Tobias actually broke were series conventions and simply our perceptions of how close Ash was to the champion Elite Four or even conference winner level. And more than for entering the series as an overpowered Diabolus X Machina, my new favorite word that I will never get tired of saying, for fielding Donald Darkrai or Leonard Latios, or for momentarily demolishing Ash's morale. The real reason Tobias is so hated on as a quote-unquote broken character and at the same time so celebrated as a game sharked troll is because the writers did not endow him with a sliver of a backstory or grant us even a glimpse into his motivations. Had they done so, Tobias could have been remembered as a cool character who resonated with fans rather than one who gets the he who must not be named treatment every time his chapter in Ash's life pops up. Hmm. By comparison, Alan taking Ash out in the Kalos League semi-finals may have been somewhat polarizing, but Alan had been built up over the course of the Mega Evolution specials as well as through his interactions with Ash in the X, Y, and Z series, such that there was actually substance behind the skills, and accordingly he is still quite popular to this day. Of course, the core appeal of Tobias' character in the lead-up to his match against Ash precisely was his aura of mystery. But if we had learned something about how he had become so strong, and about where he was headed next in the aftermath of that battle, it would have made him much less broken, game, genie, scumbag, and more, now that, is a respectable badass in the eyes of fans. On one hand, the fact that Tobias showed up out of nowhere, obliterated an entire league with a single Pokemon, then simply vanished to leave everyone eating smoke for decades is kind of awesome, but on the other hand, it also feels like an antagonizing cop-out on the part of the writers that leaves us wondering what exactly happened to him, who he even was, and when or if he will ever come back. Given that Cynthia appears in Pokemon Journeys as the reigning Sinnoh champion, we know that Tobias did not go on to usurp her position as the champion slash voluminous hair babe. And whether he actually battled Cynthia, the Elite Four members, or even expressed interest in entering the Champions League is unclear. From what we saw of Tobias, he looked more than capable of giving the Fearsome Five a run for their money, but I suspect that he merely was not interested after proceeding through the cakewalk that was the Lily of the Valley Conference, and departed elsewhere to further his training and capture even more powerful Pokemon. And looking at things from a fourth wall breaking perspective, it's entirely possible that Tobias is simply a meta jab to the ribs of the average Pokemon video game player who sweeps the NPCs of the games with ridiculous teams comprised of nothing but legendary and mythical Pokemon. But personally, I would really like to get a canonical explanation one day, because Tobias was a cool, likely Elite Four champion or higher level trainer who has been, perhaps, unjustly hated on as a broken character on account of the writers giving him less backstory than Arnold's mother. A trainer who broke our perceptions of Ash at a new peak of his career as much as he broke everything we knew about how powerful trainers can get in the anime, and a trainer who is still out there somewhere getting stronger and stronger. The lack of a Tobias presence in the Masters 8 seems to indicate that the writers may not have any intentions of bringing him back, but would he not serve as the perfect catalyst to pull Ash into a new region, populated by trainers stronger than the strongest trainers of his wildest dreams, and on the note of wild dreams, how would you like to see Tobias return?